Welcome to the Media Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. I know you're all dying to know what we're talking about. Oh, um, dying, uh, um, talking about, um, Sudoku. We're just a pair of working stiffs. <laughs> uh, you just sit stiff, giggity. <laughs> so anyway, in today's episode review, we are going to review Little Witch Academia Season 1, Episode Number 9, and that Travel Lounge? Is that how we say? I think so. Travel Lounge. Okay. I'm just going to send it to you just to be sure. But anywho, yes. Uh, in this episode, on a trip off school grounds, Akko breaks the no magic rule and raise a skeleton from the dead when it runs when it runs off she and her friend must chase it Akko 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 what? <laughs> uh, so before we get into it uh, first impressions are in order and silver what do you think? well this this episode is just plain fun it's watching an absurdist character running around and everyone trying to do damage control in his wake but then it hits you for some feels at the end. True, so true. Thoroughly enjoyable, th- thoroughly enjoyable uh, episode for me. <laughs> Dang. Ah, I need to stop that. But anyway, uh, as for me, I love this episode. This episode is great. Um, at first I thought like, oh, uh, Aku needs to deal with this crazy person. Ah, God, that's annoying. That's very annoying. And then when it goes near the end like oh wait what I, I, I'm feeling oh no I'm leaking ah I'm feeling it wasn't tears hey <laughs> uh, but anywho yes uh, it was a very awesome episode so anyway um, if you have not watched this episode yet go do so and we'll catch up welcome back hope you enjoyed the episode and well, we start off the episode with Miss Snooty Pants uh, telling these students that, yo, you must listen to the rules, uh, make sure you don't embarrass Lunanova, and no magic outside of school grounds, and uh, you have to be on your best behavior. Then the headmistress comes along saying, yo, I got a shoe for a hat. It's crazy, yo. <laughs> Miss Ursula, try it on. It'll look great on you. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, speaking of Ursula, when she declares you poor, unfortunate souls, it's like, hey, <laughs> get your own catchphrase. Oh, uh, God, no. <clears throat> so, anyway, uh, one of the few things that the students um, must leave behind is one of their precious items. Uh, it's for the recovery spell where uh, if the student is late or whatever it is they just cast the recovery spell and somehow she will be dragged to Luna Nova so anywho Akko's group decides to head off well you know uh, no, um, I know I, I have to say what are the items for the characters uh, so she is a mushroom uh, Lotte is a book what book series was it again Silver? Let's say, oh, uh, man, I'm so tempted to say Twilight. I think it's Nightfall. Yes, Nightfall, yes. So her, her thing is Nightfall, and Akko is the shiny, no, um, what is it? No, shiny chariot. Is it shiny chariot? Yes, her, her shiny chariot card. Yeah, that's her most... They really could, they really could put up that in protective sleeve. I mean, that, that thing is mint. I know. Like, I, I'm sure... Uh, what, what was it again? Um, Ultra Pro supplies all those things. Like, just go look at Ultra Pro. Uh, they have the best sleeves out there. So, Akko, if you need sleeves, go go get them. And if you're a pure Japanese person, like you really need made from Japan, key MCs are there for you. So, go check it out. <laughs> a plug. But anywho... Once all the items are placed into a cauldron for protection, that's dumb, uh, we see the group walks through a graveyard. Uh, Ako just asked Sushi, asking like, um, Sushi, 
I thought you said this was a shortcut. Like, we're no way close to town. This is just insane. And Suji just says, oh yeah, this is a shortcut. I, I, I just want to go here and pick mushrooms. Like, this very rare mushroom here only grows in the graveyard. Ooh. It's one heck of a specific mushroom. I know. And the rest of the crew are like, oh god, Suji, you're, you're going to be the death of us. And somehow, what, um, Ako, no, Lote thinks that she heard a ghost and Ako bumps into Lote and somehow they crash into a gravestone, toppling it down. Oh no. So Ako says, you know what, no problem, I got this, I got this. Let's use this magic reversal spell that... Uh, Miss Ursula taught me how to use. It'll, it'll be fixing the gif. Lote doesn't want Ako to use it because uh, it's forbidden for students to use magic outside of school grounds. But Ako just says, no problem. If we do it, uh, lickety split, and no one will notice us. So she states the enchant uh, in incarnation and twirls a bit of the magic dust and somehow it hits Suchi's hand with the mushroom and now they resurrect the skeleton. What? And Why I'm, not? And I'm going to pause here. Silver, what do you think? I love the contrast in teachers. You have, like, like you call her, Miss Snooty. I forget her actual name, but she's basically just the killjoy who's so worried about Luna Nova's reputation she forgets that she's supposed to be stimulating young minds. And that is unfortunate. But then there's the headmistress who really gets it. She's sort of on double doors wavelength. More important that we, we, uh, that we foster the young minds than enforce a status quo. So that's always, I'm always happy to see a teacher presented in that light. But I kind of find it funny that Diana is in no way related to this, as usually when there's a matter of Luna Nova pride and decor, She's usually the first one to be the model student. But nope, in this case, Akko and company are able to sabotage themselves. Good for them. Yeah. Maybe, uh, what, Diana and her group are going on a different route? Like you mentioned before, uh, Su Susie just drags them to the graveyard. Well, Susie definitely seems to just, uh, she is death incarnate. Susie, destroyer of worlds. Yep. Oh man. But uh, honestly, I think she was just trying to get them killed so more of those mushrooms will grow. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, and by the way, uh, Miss Nudie Pen's name is Anne Fenelan. Good for her. Where is she from again? Huh, doesn't state. Oh well, whatever. So, anywho, uh, where was I again? Yes, continuing on the plot. So, a skeleton is resurrected and. This skeleton is insane. Like, he is very, what should we call this, animated for a dead person. Really animated, you might say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, wait, reanimated? Isn't that one of the big no-nos in magic? Oh, yes. Oh, uh, no. They've only vaguely hinted that it's a hor the punishment is a horror beyond imagining. Yep. Oh, no, no, no. That's not good. That's not good. So... Uh, the skeleton runs off trying to find this mysterious man that he hates and wants to get revenge over. So he runs. Suchi just points out like, um, guys, aren't you worried that the skeleton is going to hurt someone? Uh, you, you guys don't want to chase after it? And they do. They do. So Lotte activates a spell to create vine whips or vine ropes to catch the skeleton but it seems that Lotte's spell is not enough or the battery in the wand has run out so the spell dies out and the skeleton runs into town and in town it creates a havoc by just creating havoc uh, he runs around uh, harassing people uh, asking them if he's that ca person that he's looking for and the skeleton doesn't even know what 
he looks like. And Ako restrains him, but by restraining him, he she uh, attracts a crowd of normies. And now Ako needs to think on her feet. And, well, she does. She does. Um, she creates a narrative where, oh, this skeleton is looking for the person that did him wrong. And Lotte is the uh, Denzel in distress. And, oh, this play is very awesome. And I just love <laughs> this scene where Suchi just takes a hat and bask for money. <laughs> and Akko rolls with it. I don't think she says that uh, Lote is the damsel in stress. She's the one who brought him back. Uh, uh, I'm very rephrasing here. Like, I, I watched this this afternoon. My, my memory is not the greatest yours. You just watched this a few seconds ago. <laughs> it's true. Although, now that I think about it, she's saying, Oh, yes, here's the witch that brought him back. Wow, way to throw her under the bus. But it's for play, so... <laughs> but Suchi, I think, like, what? <laughs> Even so, I mean, Lotte didn't do nothing. This is on YouTube. Oh, yeah, totally. But totally, totally. well, Suchi just picks the cash. Like, uh, she suddenly takes um, a hat and uh, uh, takes money from the general audience. Like, what the hell? <laughs> and, th- and then she spends it on booze. Yep, so true, so true. But anywho... Um, after that, the skeleton runs off to a trash can or a tra- mm, not can. What is it again? Trash bin. A uh, garbage dumpster. Yeah, a dumpster. So the police comes around and tries to stop the skeleton. And the girl comes along trying to save the skeleton and Lotte just says, oh, um, that's my grandpa. My grandpa thinks he's a pirate. Um, he's not well in the head. And every time when he sees uh, a dumpster, he thinks it's a treasure chest and wants to go in. The police buys it and tells Lotte to uh, make sure he's under control and whatnot. And with that, let's pause here. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, this guy is pure energy. We never really get his name because he can't remember it. So he's just the dead guy. <laughs> yeah. But the dead guy is very sprightly. He is just all over town getting drinks, of which I'm sure... I mean, they shouldn't really let uh, Susie in there to... You know, it's a, it's a bar, and she's most certainly underage. Harumph. One, that town is beautiful. I mean, I love the design. I love the... Even the brickwork, when they... After they talk the police into leaving the dead guy alone... Uh, they look around and he's gone, but you the angle shows the two characters sitting at this brick circle, showing a great deal of detail to this town that makes it more real than if it had just been generic brick street or what have you. Well, I, I agree, I agree. But it does, <laughs> it does raise the question, why is it created that way? Why is it not a full circle, but a half circle? <laughs> All these squares form a circle. <laughs> All these squares form a circle. <laughs> oh, and all these circles form a triangle. Oh, boys. But either way, just that it, it's fun to see this, this guy running around causing havoc. Although, the weird thing is that you there's not a lot you can really say in terms of character or, or story. It's more just a progression of events without a lot of rising tension. That is true. Um, the... The, the, technically, there's no protagonist or antagonist. Uh, it's just the main character in being involved in a slapstick scenario. And the scenario here now is that Aku reanimated a dead guy and said that guy is running a muck in town. And for a dead guy, he's fast. Very. Mm hmm. And Dude must have run track in life. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's carry on. So, talking about fast skeleton, uh, after the police leave, uh, Ako and Su- uh, sorry, Ako and Lotte take some time to breathe, but notice that the skeleton is gone and has been hanging out in a bar. Ako and Lotte go into the bar and see that oh, um, 
the skeleton and some bar patrons are just having a good time. And Susie is at the uh, countertop just enjoying a drink. It's again, underaged, underaged. Yeah, true, but, but she probably has a fake ID. She probably drugged the, the bartender with a mushroom. Well, uh, talking about drugs, she just reveals a potion that will make the bar patrons uh, forget what they saw. So that's convenient. So after that, uh, the skeleton runs out and Akko managed to grab him by the hand. But still, a uh, skeleton is too fast and uh, Akko just manages to grab his hand. <laughs> so uh, the girls chase after him and Akko being Akko jumps right into traffic without looking left and right. And she is almost hit by a truck while the skeleton turns back and jumps in the way pushing Akko out of danger but he gets destroyed in the process and the girls think that oh no he's doomed like he couldn't like he's well dead dead like his body part is gone and whatnot but no no uh it seems that he can just reassemble himself again to be good as new. So, with that, this skeleton somehow remembers a bit of what he wants to go and what to do. And he wants to go to the specific place where he just remembers. So, they hit there and they got no idea what to do. And... A civilian passed by and just says, Oh, you want to know who was the previous tenant and whatnot? Uh, it was a, this creepy guy that bought the whole block and whatnot. And said creepy guy is the... Uh, what you call this? Uh, scare, sh magic store in town? Yes, the magic shop. Mm -hmm. So they go in and said magic guy just says that, Oh, um, it's... The place is magical, so I just bought it. And also, uh, this was the time of the Witch Golden Age where uh, society relies on witch to do some stuff. So that's pretty cool. And Akko is enamored. Lotte just says, we learned this in uh, wizard uh, witch history. <laughs> uh, Akko needs visuals, man. Akko needs visuals. Wait, witch history, did you say? Witch history. Yes, which history are you talking about? The witch. Yes, so that's what I'm asking. I'm just saying, the witch. You, you talking in circles. <laughs> now, which which history are we talking about? The witch. <laughs> that's what I'm asking you. <laughs> uh, the witch ones. <laughs> I don't know which ones. <laughs> okay, let's stop this Albuquerque Castello a bit. Uh, but anywho, uh, while Aku and the girls talk to the uh, shop owner. Uh, we see this skeleton rummaging to some pile and discovering that hey this is painting this painting looks like the person that I hate oh revenge revenge and the person is a lovely gentleman who married a witch and got a daughter uh, the daughter's name is uh, Emily was it? I believe so so yes the daughter's name is Emily I think think so the skeleton here once uh, remembers bits and pieces of what's going on so he goes out and hears a bell and heads to the bell tower and i'm gonna stop here so silver what do you think now we're entering rising tension because we learn more about this mysterious figure this guy hates then we learn the identity and the motive. So now there's more of a conflict. It's not just, well, okay. There was a conflict starting in, but it was just crazy guys running around. Now there's an end goal. Now we're getting to the meat of things. Again, it's just silly craziness. And it's always sort of sad to talk about golden age because then you realize you're in the aftershocks of that. Oh uh, yeah, that's so true. Golden age were always the best because those were the time where things were booming, things were just 
getting started. But at the same time, I think I think to myself, no one does a story about the golden age because that's when everything's good. But you never know it's a golden age until it's over. That is true. Anything more to add, Silva? Nope. Are you? All right. So, uh, as the heroes admire the view from the top, uh, Sid Skeleton remembers who he is, and he is Sid Guy who he hates. And the reason why is because he betrayed the trust of his daughter, Emily. Was it? Oh, God. Oh, no, no, no. I'm very confused. Do you have the wiki open? Yep, yep. Uh, and Miranda. No, okay. Not Emily. Miranda. Miranda Holbrook. Reader writes. What? Miranda writes. <laughs> no, no. Just Miranda. Ah, uh, boys. But anywho, um, said skeleton. Did we get a name for the skeleton? No, his name is never revealed. Mm, well, he just he re- he recognizes himself, but I don't think he ever announces his name. Well, besides for the obvious, Mister Holbrook, but uh, no, just Mister Holbrook on the wiki. So anywho, uh, he hates himself because he left Miranda alone and thinking that Miranda had a sh- crappy upbringing because uh, the father left her alone and whatnot. The skeleton says that uh, um, when she got into the witching school, uh, he made the daughter a one or yeah, a one that doubles as a bell to remind her of all good times and that. Ah, man, I forgot. And while this, while they process this, Ako just realized that, yo, uh, the pattern of the bell and the look of the stuff reminds her of Miranda Holbrook, uh, the headmistress. So, could she be the father? So, Ako uh, wants to reunite um, Mr. Holbrook and Miranda together just because they're... Well, it's Ako. Ako is the type of character to... Uh, make everybody happy and she do so by if I'm not mistaken uh, getting a what you call this using her potion that fixes things and splashes it on the bell and the bell this detach itself from the uh, tower and goes to the one that Miranda has so you you get this crazy scene where three witches and a skeleton hold on for dear life uh, flying through wherever they need to go to Luna Nova so as the bell hits to uh, Miranda Holbrook uh, Miranda just activates a spell to catch the bell and catch all the girls safe so, once that happens, Miranda and the skeleton dude uh, reunite and they have a pretty good conversation. And, uh, man, I'm going to pause here. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, I will say that that trip rang a certain bell. <laughs> uh, at least the bell didn't ring them up high. That's bad. But I'm sure they appreciate that uh, Akka was willing to chime in. Yeah, yeah, true that, true that. And uh, you, you could see that... <laughs> you, you see, it is a bell. <laughs> well, ask not for whom the bell tolls, because we can't remember his first name. I don't think so. He has a first name. I, I'm checking on the wiki and it's none. But anywho, uh, what do you think, man? But, well, we have the, the emotional escalation as he realizes, hey, I hate myself. <laughs> but... Funny thing is that towards the end of this episode, especially about what, what's coming next, I was actually drawing parallels to Onward, the Pixar movie, even though this came out first. But you have the, the family reunion, but you have a very limited time to do so. And it involves trans- emotions transcending mortality. And resolution or closure for both the departed and those who stayed behind. So I enjoy seeing these these ideas expressed in a different way, only basic similarity between them. I mean, Pixar uh, onward and 
Little Witch Academia are two very different expressions. So take from that what you will. But one thing I really love is that Akko, her emotions always get her into trouble, and yet her emotions also bring out her best self. Suddenly she's not worried about her punishment, she just wants to do right by this guy. That's something special. And something commendable. If she just temper her emotions with some forethought, she'd probably be a much more positive force. True, but that's not Akko. Akko is the chaotic uh, neutral. <laughs> well, chaotic good, I'd say. Ah, true, true. Uh, she Give her time, she, though. Yeah, I mean, she she is chaotic, but... Uh, yeah, I say chaotic good. Chaotic good does describe her personality type. And, yeah, I, I do enjoy this scene. This scene really tugs on my heart strings, man. Like, oh, God, I was crying. Uh. So, and we're... we're we're about to get the biggest heartstring tugs. Yep. So Miranda and uh, Skeleton Dude goes to another gravestone. And said gravestone is Miranda's mum. And they talk about, you know, s- uh, f- stuff like how Miranda says that I never hated you. And because of you, I love magic and I am the headmistress of the school. And uh, Skeleton Dude is happy and... Yeah, he, he's happy that he done right by uh, Miranda. And with that, he vanishes into Stardust and says that, hope you witches get the, whatchamacallit, this acclinate? I, I forgot what it says. <laughs> but he wished them well. Yeah, may, may the era of witches never end. Yes, yes. And with that, uh, Ma- Miranda posed a punishment to Akko because Akko broke one of the cardinal rule, cardinal rule of witchcraft, and that's using magic for to resurrect the dead. Oh, boys! Once you really think about it, right? Akko messed up hard. Like Akko messed up. Well, yeah, she, although, uh, what's the headmistress like? Well, you gave me a chance to see my father again. Thank you for violating the bounds between life and death and basically resurrecting his corpse. Yeah. I should, I have every right to smack you upside the head right now. <laughs> True that. But still, um, <coughs> Miss Miranda says that, okay, um, Akko, you broke one of the cardinal rules of magic, and that is to not not use magic to resurrect the dead but you did so your punishment is drum roll please to fix the broom in the broom closet and that's the punishment yep yep Akko and the rest are just like what really that's the punishment and Miss Miranda says like yeah yeah yeah, you you gonna broke the rule and so on out, but still, yeah. uh, you gave me a chance to uh, have some closure with my father, so that's all good. But still, you broke the rule, so now go to the broom closet and fix all the brooms. And it seems light, right? Like <laughs> it's just fixing brooms. How bad could it be? Next scene, oh my god, there's a bunch of broken brooms. And Akko says this is the worst. Like this is the worst punishment. <laughs> like oh god, Susie says. Quit your helping and start the uh, mending. And Akko just says, why don't, why, why don't we use magic to fix the brooms? That would be great. Uh, and Suchi and, Suchi and Akko just fight about, uh, wouldn't it be great to have witches out in the open using their magic to help humanity? And Suchi just says, mushroom well enough. <laughs> and with that episode ends. So, Mushroom World will be fun, full of fun guys. Aha! Ah, uh, Anyway, uh, Silver, final thoughts and what do you think? Well, it's heartwarming at the end and a, a satisfying payoff. <laughs> Akko is back to being a petulant kid <laughs> as she's like, oh, I thought she was nice. You got off easy. I know that doesn't look easy, but you did. Yeah, I mean, that one of those one of the cardinal rules that they... Uh, learn in what? What was the episode where Akko turned into a fish? 
Oh man, like. Oh yes, blub, blub, yeah, blub. yeah. So that though that uh, she she got off easy. If not, like, oh man, that was bad. But still, um, carry on, Silva. So all in all, it's a fun, fun episode with an eccentric character. At first, it's just running around trying to catch the kooky guy, and but then there's this emotional build up and payoff, which I think really drives at the heart of it. So. You got in some cases you got to hang in until the end, but I think it's worth the journey. I did love the visual of the leaves forming the reunited couple in the afterlife as they said goodbye. Completely undone by Susie saying, "Oh, I think I swallowed a bit of that dead guy." <laughs> and what Lotte just says, "Oh, you spoil the mood." Uh, funny enough, they did the same joke in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Oh, God. So as for me, um, this episode was a lot of fun. I. I really enjoy this one. Like at first, I thought this this is going to be one of those episodes where it's going to be annoying because they have to chase a dead guy, and who knows what it will be. Probably ah man, th there's a lot of ways you can go. Eh? But I at, fir at first I found it annoying, but later on near the back where we get a bit of his backstory, and we see that he he just wants to do his best for his daughter, and. In in the end, with the reunion, that that part really, oh man, tears were dropping from my eyes. So yeah, it it was a good one. It was a good one, and it shows a bit of character building for Miranda, because it shows that she's a kind-hearted woman willing to bend the rules, and she has a history like she's. Part human, part witch. I don't know if that even matters, but still, that's really cool. Really heart touching, by the way. Like I cried a bit. Really. Whew. Anyway, um, Silver, wha what are you gonna do next week? Well, as we await the return of My Little Pony, well, ta either talk about Pony Life or seeing the season ten comics. I think we'll move on to My Little Pony issue seventy four, starring Zephyr Breeze. Oh yeah, this one is. Oh man, I, I like this one. Like, on a personal note, I like this issue because it deals with a very sensitive yet relatable topic. Like, this issue here is pretty good. Very good. So, we'll look forward to talking about True it. True that. So, anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at divisiongmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you can find me lots of places. Do a search on Twitter or DeviantArt for MLP Silver Quill, and you shall discover that I am there. I under I'll be under Silver Quill on Patreon and Kofi, where you can support my videos and comics. And if you do a search on YouTube for After the Factor Silver Quill, Silver Quill, there I'll be. Hello. As IDW Comics are gearing up once again, we'll get to see My Little Pony season ten. And I will be re posting reviews and editorials on Equestria Daily. Awesome. Guys, go check Silver out. Uh, his article is always a hoot. So don't miss it. So anyway, um, also, oh, and also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And switch radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank you, Lucky Knight, Tristan, and also Master of Leg. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I'm the Silver Quill. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Knock em dead. So, Ako just created a resurrection spell. That's pretty interesting. Except she probably doesn't know how to do it again. Uh, she just needs to find a mushroom and also that vial that Miss Versa gave. But you know what? Since Ako is into the card games, right? She should have used Monster Reborn or Call of the Dead. So, yeah, pretty fail there, Ako. Oh, but that card's been banned. I hate card games. Hard motorcycles. <laughs>